Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and then he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him, so they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who was without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is an old Hebrew folk tale that I absolutely love. The folk tale is about creation and was being told around the same time Genesis was being recorded. But I want to stress, this is not in the Bible. This is not a scripture passage at all. It's only a folk tale. But it's a folk tale that makes a very good point. When God created Adam and Eve, they could talk with God as easily as any two of us could carry on a conversation. And when they looked up in the sky, they could see the glory of heaven and all of its heavenly host because their eyes had not yet been blinded by sin. But when the serpent came and tricked Adam and Eve into disobeying God, God was angry and all creation shook. And the Lord said, these people I created no longer deserve to see my glory. So the Lord took off his great blue cloak and spread it over the dome of the sky. And when Adam and Eve looked up and realized they could no longer see heaven, they mourned and they wept for three days. And on the third day, the Lord was so moved to pity at the sound of their weeping. The Lord took a pin and he poked holes all throughout the fabric of his cloak. So at the end of the day, when the sun went down, Adam and Eve and all their descendants could look up into the night sky and see the lights of heaven shining through the cloth until the day when we could see the glory of God again. Keep your eye fixed on the goal. That is another consistent Lenten theme. Now, if I could take all the scriptures in the Bible and boil them down into the most simple, concise message, it would be, God loves you, God loves me, God died for us so we could join him when we die, so treat others as something sacred, because, God, it could be because we're all sacred to God. That's it in a nutshell. Keep your eye on the goal. We were not created for this world only. We were not created to die. We were created to live. And there's no life fuller than life with heaven in Christ. You know, sometimes I think we go through life with a sort of neutral zone around our heads. And I include myself in this. And truth and grace just can't penetrate the neutral zone. Because if it did, we wouldn't sin anymore. Why do we sin? We sin because we forget the goal. We sin because we forget this world is passing away. From the moment we're born, this life is passing away. The pleasures of this world are fleeting. They're passing away. We forget that. And when we forget that, we get distracted from the goal. St. Paul writes in his letter to the Philippians, It is not that I have reached it yet, or have already finished my course, but I am racing to grasp the prize, if possible, since I have been grasped by Christ Jesus. Brothers, I do not think of myself as having reached the finish line. I give no thought of what lies behind, but push on to what is ahead. My entire attention is on the finish line as I run toward the prize which God calls me. Life on high in Christ Jesus. St. Paul is saying, keep your eye on the goal. And we are living in a culture that is trying very hard to distract us from the goal. The culture has kicked God out of schools. The culture has kicked God out of politics. 
When you, when you, what do you think the ratio of TV shows and movies is that makes us think of good things, godly things, virtuous things, as opposed to sinful things? 98% to 2% maybe? As long as the vision of the goal remains blurred or impaired, the world will remain dysfunctional. Jesus was always encouraging others to keep their eye on the goal. Last week in the parable of the prodigal son, we tell the story of a young man who lost sight of the goal. And how when he came to his senses, how his father welcomed him back with joy. Today, Jesus rescues a woman caught in the act of adultery. Now the first thing we have to remember about this situation is that it's a setup. The Pharisees and scribes are trying to discredit or destroy Jesus. They bring him this woman and note... It's only the woman, not the man. Did you ever pick up on that? When, where did the guy disappear to? If she was caught in the very act of adultery, somebody else had to be there. If a man was caught in the act of adultery, he received 39 lashes. If a woman was caught in the act of adultery, she was stoned to death. So there's an imbalanced justice system going on here, to say the least. And they say to Jesus, according to the law of Moses, she should be stoned. What do you have to say about it? And there's the trap. Because if Jesus says, stone her, they now have a tangible charge to bring against Jesus to get him in trouble with the Roman Empire. Hey, this Jesus guy, this, this, this wandering prophet is inciting mob violence to kill people. If he says, let her go, they can condemn him for breaking the law of Moses and discredit him with the people. Note how he answers them. Jesus plays the word game right back on them. He never really answers the question, does he? He doesn't say, do it or don't do it. Jesus simply says, let the one among you without sin cast the first stone. So if somebody throws a stone, he'll implicitly be saying that he's without sin. And therefore, he'll be discredited. By claiming to be equal with God, the only one with no trace of sin. Jesus turns the trap right around on them. And they all finally start leaving, beginning with the elders, since the elders would have been the first to figure out what Jesus just did to them. And then Jesus says to the woman, as no one condemned you, neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. That's one little verse we always tend to forget. Sin no more. Jesus was telling her, keep your eye on the goal. Jesus was trying to tell those Pharisees to keep their eye on the goal by confronting them with their hypocrisy. And Jesus tries to tell us to keep our eyes on the goal by practicing charity and using the confessional whenever we fail in charity. Because all sin is ultimately a failure of charity in some form. I'm so pleased that so many have been coming to confession since Lent began. And I want to encourage you to keep using the confessional throughout the year. Don't wait for Lent. Go to confession regularly. Also, if you haven't gone to confession yet, make it a point to go in the next couple of weeks. I will be offering extended confession times during Holy Week again, as I have done in the past. So no matter what your schedule is, you'll have an opportunity to go. Get a good spiritual house cleaning before Easter to remove all obstructions that are distracting you from the goal. Look for opportunities to practice charity. Look for opportunities to show kindness and mercy to others, as God has been kind and merciful to all of us. My brothers and sisters, it is my prayer today that we all keep our eye on the goal and so have the privilege of seeing the unveiled glory of God in heaven. And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.